who want to talk must have a chance. And then I'll ask also the, the, the office at the back assisting me when the two minutes uh, it's expired, uh, but I do have a timekeeper here at home, but also you must assist me uh, in the office. Uh, by those words, I'm hoping that we'll be having a fruitful meeting and giving our views and the way forward to our SASCOG members. Um, uh, by that, yeah. Honorable Min Deputy Minister, I'll be giving you uh, to greet us, but what I've told the members on, of the office that SASCOG were giving you 30 minutes. It's 20, not beyond uh, 30 yeah. minutes, in order that one hour, 30 minutes must be uh, taken by honorable members discussing and questions. Uh, the somebody was saying, Chair. The M. Oh, honorable Mshongo. I'm happy. Chair, I move with your proposal. What proposal happened to honorable Mshongo? Thank you, Honorable Mshongo. At the end, are you around? Yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, the... I support your proposal. Okay, Chair. let me, the M, uh, I don't want anything from you. I'll want you after the presentation, uh, oh. if you don't mind. That's fine. Okay. Let me give Chair it President. to Tasco. Hello. Oh, oh, my chairperson is around now. I do have a call chairperson. Uh, then when I was starting, they were saying we are not yet in. Uh, thank you, my co chair. Yeah, I was I was, I just wanted to make a suggestion that uh, we give the depart we give Sasco some more than thirty minutes because we are receiving reports from them so that we can engage with the report, we can still have uh, another time to engage or even write the questions to them to be answered at a later stage. When people are giving a report, 30 minutes won't be enough. I, I'm just suggesting. But uh, th th thank you, Honorable Member, Comrade, uh, Co-Chair. We did tell the department and whoever was coming to present that they must... Uh, have a summary uh, briefing, but uh, that's your proposal. Uh, but the, the one that I proposed, it was supported. I don't know. Uh, Honorable members? Uh, no, I'm easy. It's okay. Oh, okay, okay. Um, we wanted that you must have your cake, a big slice of cake in their presentation. Uh, thank you so much, Saskok. The leader of Saskog. Chairperson, I'm uh, Chairperson. It's the acting CEO here. I'm waiting. Um, our acting president, uh, Mr. Skusana, uh, should be online. Uh, I'm trying to see here in my list of, of attendees if he's there. Uh, I'll tell you who's who's here. I, I noticed board member Jerry Sekwaba is there. Uh, board member Anand Singh is there. Um, I'm just trying to see who else is 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 is, is there. Um, oh, there we go. Um, so, Chairperson, um, as I said, Board Member Anand Singh is dialed in. I can see his name. Uh, board Member Mr. Sagwaba is there. Uh, board Member Mr. Kaya Majake is there. Uh, Mr. Kobus Mare is there. Um, I'm just going down the list. Uh, 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 some some of the board members that still haven't signed in. Um, and my and my colleague just for patients on Anna as well. Chairperson, honourable, uh, yes, honourable. 
Yes. Can we can we humbly request the acting CEO to be on camera? Because he did. Uh, he did explain that he is having a problem about the camera uh, earlier on. Okay. Yes. But they were asking that he must try his best, but he reported that that he, ha- he is having a problem about the camera. I thank you, Honorable Member. All right. Uh, Chair, Sorry, yes. Chair. Yes. Can we kindly ask uh, a certain guest to switch off the, the mics? We've got Kaya. His mic is on. Uh, he's not speaking, but the mic is on, and it's going to distort the sound here from our side as well. Call all the members that are not speaking, switch off their mics. Thank you, Chair. No, before I switch mine, um, I'm seeing that Sasko has got about uh, seven uh, board members. Uh, is, is it like that even to you, uh, Jabu? I'm trying to get their names, Chair, but I, I see a lot of people on my side as well. So we will do yes. a quick register to ensure. CEO, uh, when you were mentioning the names, I counted up to seven. Is it correct? Chairperson, that should be correct, Chairperson, uh, because okay. we do have apologies from, from, from three members. So that should be correct in terms of board members. Okay. Uh, honorable members, do we have apologies? Honorable members, do we have apologies from you? Chair. Yes. Uh, this is the Deputy Minister. I would like to tender an apology for the Minister. As I have indicated yesterday, there is a, um, he is having a meeting with the stakeholders of the creative sector. But the meeting clashed with this one. So we agreed that he should attend that meeting and I attend this one. I thank you, Honorable uh, DM. From members, uh, Ajablile? Uh, no apologies from my side, Chair. Thank you. Um, from uh, my from- Chair, NCOP? Uh, good morning, honourable members. Uh, no morning. apologies from the select committee side. Are sir. they all in? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Um, uh, let me. I, uh, oh, sorry. Huh? Sure. Oh, I was gonna ask you if I can do a roll call for the NSOP. Yes, please. All right. Uh, on the select committee side, I've got Honorable Nchabeleng, who's the chairperson. I've got Honorable Gillion. I've got Honorable Lutuli. I've got Honorable Christian. I've got Honorable Baha. I've got Honorable Lehi. I've got Honorable Lehihi. And I've got Honorable Malega. Thank you, Chair. Where is your whip? Malega. The whip is Honorable Ndongeni. Is here? Yes, she's here, sir. Oh. Uh, NA members? Members? NA members? Are they all here? No apologies. I'm starting the meeting now. NA members? Why is Zoleka or Ajabulile? Don't morning. don't waste time. time. Yes. Good, mo- good morning, Chair. All the members are in. No apologies, uh, but Miss Malumane and Miss Njaisa are absent. Oh, which means you do have it. Uh, no apology of two apology. members are absent. Yes, yes, okay. Chair. Um, to you. Uh, Saskok, who's uh, who's going to present? Uh, is it CEO or acting? Acting what? You said we have got acting CEO, acting uh, president. Who's going to yes. give us the report? 
East. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, uh, good morning, Deputy Minister, Chairperson, members of the Portfolio Committee. Um, uh, I will be doing the presentation lead by board. What's going on? We can't hear. Is it network problem? No, Chief. Chair, I think it's having I think it's having network problems, Chair. We are still speaking to our IT guys to see what's happening with him. Can you present so long as you have proposed? Let him go uphill. <laughs> <laughs> no, initially Ajabulile was asking that if he has got a problem, he's going to present because uh, the presentation is with the office and with your good selves. Can we allow? Yes. Okay. Ajabulile? No, no, Chair. I am projecting. I am projecting, Chair, not presenting. Okay. Project. It's and on, Chair. Okay. Okay. There is. Yes. Mute. Honorable members, please mute. Ajabulile and Zo, you must mute everyone, even myself. I'm out now. Nothing is happening. Honorable members, No one is speaking in the projection, and the projection is not moving. Chairperson, must, can I continue? Yes. Yes? yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, if I just go back one slide uh, to the person, if, thank you. Chairperson, the first presentation that I would like to make to the Portfolio Committee and your good self is a status update on the implementation of the recommendations of the ministerial committee. Thank you. Next slide. We are, we are now in slide uh, two, and I'm very quickly going to cover these areas, and it's on the screen. You can see it, and I'll proceed to slide three. Thank you. So just to give a quick background uh, where this started, uh, the, um, the current recommendations made by the Ministerial Committee date back to Minister Tulas Messi, who received complaints from shareholders and uh, put together a mechanism for evaluating these comments. We then moved on to the Honorable Minister Kaza, who finding and recommendations and had a meeting with SESCOC in February 2019 with the initial report subsequently released in July 2019. We fast forward to currently Honorable Minister Mtetwa. Uh, they, they, we've had a couple of engagements with the Honorable Minister and his task team, uh, one in August 2019 and subsequently in October, November and as early as January this year. The purposes of the meetings were to engage and reach agreement on some of the recommendations that needed to be uh, implemented and our constitution accordingly updated. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Um, the next slide. Next slide, can you hear me? Okay, I'll, mo I'll move on. I, I don't think the next slide can, can come up. Um, uh, can we progress the next slide? All right. Chairperson, if I may continue, I, the, the, the presentations should be available to the uh, portfolio committee members. 
In the findings of the ministerial report, there were seven key recommendations, and these related to the amendment of the Sports and Recreation Act, the composition of the SASCOC structure uh, and, its, and its mode of operation, composition of the SASCOC board, appointment of independent specialists on the board, the management structure, and the policy review and administrative matters. Under those um, uh, seven key findings, there were uh, other elements. Um, it was with regards to progressing the Pullinger Report, the National Colors Board, a five-year review of uh, transactions, the CCMA hearing in terms of the previous executive, uh, declarations of interest by board members, as well as review of the dispute mechanism. Chairperson, we've also had engagements with uh, the IOC and the IPC. We've engaged with our membership. Um, we uh, submitted uh, the uh, comments to the chair of our judicial committee, who, who uh, was the head of an ad hoc committee to review these changes. There was a board briefing in October 2019, and uh, subsequently these changes were presented to the membership. Um, A quick summary of the findings, Chairperson. Um, like I've indicated, there were several, uh, seven overall recommendations with 42 sub-recommendations. Of these 42 sub-recommendations, we've agreed on 26. There are six that we are currently reviewing, and I have a meeting as early as tomorrow with the Chairperson of the task team. Um, and there are 10 that will be outstanding because that will be dependent on the adoption of the Sports Amendment Bill as well as the completion of the uh, Quadrennial General Meeting and election of the new board. Um, the uh, amendment of the Constitution went through a constitutional process. Um, we gathered together with the membership, with the Ministerial Compliance Task Team. We reviewed it as a collective and we updated it and approved the new constitution on the 25th of January. Um, concluding remarks, Chairperson, on this presentation, right? The outstanding recommendations that we still have to implement uh, were to affect the uh, holding of a QGM, um, uh, and they will be completed after the QGM and once the new board is in place, and they will be completed once the Sports Amendment Bill is finalized. Um, what this process has happened is that it stabilized SESCOC. It's overcome most of the challenges of the past few years. Um, and uh, we are growing and developing, and there is certainly a sense of, of, of uh, stabilizing and rebuilding SESCOC. The one main issue that still continues to face us, as it does the sports movement at large, is funding. Uh, Chairperson, it's important to point out that the SESCOC funding was reduced by 100 million rand by national notaries because of their own internal criteria in terms of distribution of fund. So from the year end 2017 to now, we have been 100 million rand less funded, and that has had a huge impact on the business. Um, Chairperson, um, it's important to also point out that uh, funding for the forthcoming games, as well as the postponed Tokyo games, have still yet to be secured. Thank you, Chairperson. That ends uh, this presentation. Uh -huh. Where are we now? Where are we now? I'm here. Hello? 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 Ma Beauty, your microphone. I think we can hear you. Hello, hello. hello. Start, I'm saying that this is, the only, this is the only presentation that we are having. No financial status of SASCOC except that this summer. So, Come again. There's, 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 there's three more quick presentations. This was the no. first one. You must present all, all what we are having in order that Thank we meet the fact we must engage. We are writing as okay. we are speaking whilst we have uh, the information with us. Please 
present everything that uh, you're supposed to do today. Thank you, Chairperson. I will, I will, thank you, Chairperson. I will continue. The next presentation that I would like to take uh, Chairperson and the members of the Portfolio Committee through is an update on the QGM, the Quadrennial General Meeting, that we have uh, before Trouble's uh, presentation numbers. Um, in this presentation, I seek an update on the nomination process, the disability of nominations, and the uh, complaints by complaints um, by from National Federation. Point of order, point of, point, point of order, sir. We, uh, we can hear nothing from what is being said here. Even myself, I can't hear anything. Thanks, Chairperson. I have the same problem here as Honorable Madeline Gozi. Chablila, uh, assist us. Testing. Yes, testing. Yes, so you can hear me clearly, Chairperson? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Side, Chairperson. Point of order, Chairperson. I think the, the speaker is not prepared of, of, of the presentation, and I think this is not uh, quite right for us as, as, as a committee and the rest of the people. No, I'm suspecting it's a problem of network. Uh, fortunately, you, you Honorable Madlingos, uh, you came very earlier. Uh, we even said that uh, the secretary can just um, put it in the screen. Because we are hearing that we can't hear himself. Mm -hmm. I cannot agree that uh, he's not prepared. It's a network problem. Chairperson, Honorable Faber? Yes, Honorable Faber. Chairperson, yes, I, I'm a bit disturbed. I, I didn't get any of these presentations, you know, and for us to come blindly in a meeting, I mean, we've got our own research that we do each as a member on SASCOC, etc. But like, any financial statements, we did not get any of those. Um, we did not get any of the three. I hear there's three presentations. We only got from our parliamentary um, people a briefing on issues, etc. So I, I must say, when SASCO comes to us, they knew that they're going to sit in front of us today. We should have had this to scrutinize these type of reports and presentations beforehand. Now we sit here, it's a quick rush. You know yourself, Chair, that these meetings go quickly. We don't have a lot of screen time. We can't scrutinize this. But if we had these reports, we could go through it and ask questions. Thanks, Chair. Please be short when we are raising objection. Um, Jabu, Solega, you didn't uh, forward uh, emails to honorable members. Thank you, Chair. Uh, all presentations were sent last week to members. All four presentations. From Sascock. They were said, Chair. Can, can we be assisted by presenting uh, that which is on the screen? We'll come back to Honorable Faber. I didn't want to say when one member saying he didn't get presentation and saying that I did get it. So I wanted the office to respond. Jerry speaking from Sasko. Can I speak? Yes. Yes, Chair. Thank you, Chair. I want to propose, since uh, we are battling with te technical issues with the ACTCO, patience is there as our, acting, as our chief operation officer. Then I'll propose that she, con uh, she continue with the QGM nomination process presentation. A, go a good suggestion. Patience. Continue, patience. Patience. Hello, ma'am. Yeah, Can continue you. with your presentation. Okay. Um, thank thank you. you very much, and good morning to the chairperson, our honourable deputy minister. 
uh, and all the members of the portfolio committee. Uh, I'll continue from the slide that I'm seeing um, to indicate that obviously before calling for the nominations, um, SASCOC last year took a decision as an AGM that uh, we must look at amending the constitution and it was done on the 25th of um, January 2020. And obviously after the constitution was approved and amended, a notice calling for QGM was issued as per the timeline in terms of 60 days notice. Can I continue, Chair? Yes. Okay, okay. A notice was called, a notice calling for QGM was issued to the membership. Uh, our constitution is very clear that in 60 days uh, we should send the notice to the membership uh, uh, requesting them to nominate those that will be eligible for the elections. Key information on the process on the nomination was uh, sent to the membership and we had to make sure that um, all the constitutional requirements and documentation is outlined to the members. For purposes of managing this process, Kelly, what we did is that um, we had to appoint an external audit firm and this is guided by the constitution as well. And after that, we, with, with the recommendation of the ministerial uh, inquiry, we had to appoint an independent nomination committee for them to be able to assist us in terms of finalizing the nominations that have been received. Next slide. So in terms of how we, we, we manage the, the nominations, when they were received, they were received by the external audit. Uh, maybe I need to clarify here that whenever you talk a, a audit firm, they are thinking that uh, they had to do everything, all what they were expected to do. They were more of a a post of a post office where all the nominations uh, were sent to them, and all what they have to, they had to do was check that they meet requirements. After them receiving all the nominations per the deadline, uh, the list was submitted was submitted to the acting CEO, who then, after uh, receiving that. He took all the list, or he took the list that was received from the audit firm, and handed that over to the nominations committee. I must indicate that the members of the nominations committee, all of them, are independent people. They they, they are not involved uh, in all structures of the organisation. A final report was then submitted, and after that final report was submitted, uh, these were the results that uh, out of all those that nominated. Five nominations were reported to be non-eligible, and out of those five, three nominations received uh, were outside the prescribed timeline or the closing date that was uh, given to the membership. And then two of them, it was more about non-compliant into the documentation that was required to be sent by whoever that has been nominated. Next slide. Dispute process. Uh, those not eligible uh, lodge dispute and, and the dispute were done as guided by the constitution as well. Dispute was pro a process in compliance with the constitution, as I said earlier. Uh, an arbitrator was appointed to look at those that uh, had uh, lodged their complaint around uh, not being eligible. And then the arbitrator looked at all those, all those uh, submissions. SASCO board in its meeting then uh, resolved not to oppose applications, but provided a constitutional process followed and all required information and the documentation. And I must indicate to the meeting that uh, the arbitrator uh, looked at all those that, uh, all disputes that were raised, and the arbitrator award was in favor of all those that were non eligible to qualify and be accepted as valid um, uh, nominees for the uh, SASCO elections. Next slide. On the issue of the complaint around Mayor Mudintambi Ravele, uh, just to give a background, is that uh, uh, when the process of the nomination started, um, it, it's very clear that from the process, um, whoever that is nominated, they need to get a signature from the president of the uh, federation where they belong, together with the secretary general. But I think there were challenges uh, in terms of this one. And Mayor Ravel then wrote to the minister, to the Honorable Minister, alleging that uh, 
uh, she's being um, blocked by the acting president, Mr. Perry Hendricks, and together with the TSA president to contest for the Sasquatch elections. Then when the minister received the complaint of Mayor Ravelle, that matter was, re was referred to SASCOC board to, to look at it. The board discussed the complaint and the board as a collective uh, resolved to go and seek for an independent legal opinion. And the advocate that was appointed was a person as well who, who, who has no involvement or uh, have no clue in terms of what happens within sport. Uh, and then uh, uh, May um, Advocate uh, Baloi Mere, she was the one that was appointed, who then submitted um, the legal uh, opinion. On receipt of that legal opinion, the board deliberated on the opinion and they accepted uh, the opinion that was received from the advocate. Uh, opinion concluded that Ms. Ravel may raise the dispute for arbitration. And obviously, as Saskok, a letter was written to, to Mayor Ravelle, uh, advising her that she, she now needs to, to raise a dispute as per the dispute resolution process for purposes of it going to arbitration. Ms. Ravelle has uh, invoked Clause 29 of the Constitution, and the arbitration process related to her dispute has commenced. We are aware that um, the arbitrator that has been appointed there. Uh, looking at the matter and will be able to get an advice uh, as soon as possible in terms of the outcomes. Also, uh, Tennis South Africa has informed SASCOC that uh, they are also going to do their own in, uh, investigation in respect to the president of, of Tennis South Africa together with uh, Mera Valley. And we must inform the meeting that uh, Tennis South Africa, uh, as per its own internal due processes, uh, they have put uh, both persons uh, uh, to take, they've, they've asked them to take voluntary uh, leave of absence while they're investigating the matter. Next slide. Um, in terms of the inv uh, investigation, the board further noted the transgression of the Code of Ethics and Good Governance by the acting president, Mr. Barry Hendricks, based on the factual findings reported in the opinion and resolved uh, to commission an, inves an investigation. What the board did before it could continue to um, come up with clear process on how to deal with the matter, the board consulted uh, its chairperson of the judicial body to seek um, for guidance on what process to follow. And uh, the board was advised that uh, SASCO has to then um, request uh, the, the, the acting president, Mr. Barry Hendricks, to, to, to take a voluntary leave of absence. And Mr. Hendricks did not respond to that, uh, to that request. Neva must also indicate that we had requested him after officially and form formally we had given him the, 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 the legal opinion, even if he had it, and asked for him to, 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 to submit his representation to the board in relation to the opinion. After not receiving the, the response from the acting president, Mr. Pedi Hendricks, then the board resolved to place Mr. Hendricks on temporary leave of absence and refer the matter to the judicial body for investigation. We must say that uh, after a letter or correspondence was sent to Mr. Hendricks, uh, Mr. Hendricks undermined the board and, and did not accept the board's decision to place him on leave of absence as well as to submit the findings for investigation to the judicial body. The two processes of the investigation and arbitration are parallel and independent of each other. So the arbitration is to make an award on Ms. Ravel's claim to claim, to, uh, to claim being blocked from the nomination. So that's the first part that you should look at. But the second part is to investigate um, if um, the professional conduct and breach of uh, ethics by Mr. Hendricks. So those are the two aspects that are going to be dealt with in relation to the arbitration. Uh, just an update on the QGM. As we are all aware as members that SASCO get scheduled to have its uh, QGM on the 28th of March after the General Assembly approved it uh, in their AGM of the 23rd of November 2019. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, uh, the meeting was postponed 
And then you must say that the non-eligible of nominations dispute has been concluded and um, and that had an impact on the date of the QGM to be set. So the dispute related to the complainant of Mayor Ravel is in progress, as I said earlier, and is expected to be concluded soon for the QGM to be set for to be set for after the lockdown period. It is, in, is it, is it, it is envisaged that the investigation into unprofessional conduct and breach of conduct of ethics will also be completed before the QGM is held. On issues of uh, membership disputes, uh, that's one thing that we're dealing with as SASCOP. Uh, we thought we will need to give the, the portfolio committee an update on that one. Uh, you, can, you could have been aware that there were a number of concerns around Sanabo. That is our amateur boxing uh, structure. Um, what has happened is that uh, early this year, the entire leadership uh, resigned. And after it resigned as SASCOC, we, we then uh, intervened. And our intervention was not necessarily based on Sanabo's constitution, but was based on our responsibility as a macro sports body. We then convened a meeting where um, we met with members of the Council of Sanabo. And we can confirm now to the portfolio committee that an interim uh, committee has been put in place. Uh, they had planned to have a special general meeting around April, but due to uh, the COVID-19 um, and the lockdown, unfortunately, they couldn't have that meeting. So the, the possibility is that um, they might have their meeting in July. The second one is, uh, the second dispute is about martial arts. Uh, in martial arts, we had received a dispute from its affiliate who had a concerns about uh, governance issues within the national federations. And we can indicate to you that as per the dispute process, we had met with our member, which is martial arts, uh, because the dispute resolution process uh, uh, requests that if we receive a dispute, we have to engage a member of SASCOP to get their side of the story. And currently uh, we've uh, requested our member martial arts to send us their report so that then the next step in terms of dispute res resolution mechanism can take, take place. Chess South Africa, it has been ongoing issue around issues of leadership. Uh, we have two uh, leaders uh, managing this organization. We've tried our best as SASCOC in terms of managing this process, but I must indicate that uh, the difficulty on the matter was that um, some of the leaders have ended up taking this matter to court of law. And, and, and we can only indicate that uh, we're waiting for that process to unfold and we will to give pro, uh, uh, update uh, later on that one. On the modern paint Athlon pro, uh, dispute, we had received a dispute from, from one of the vice presidents of our fencing federation regarding one of the coaches within this federation uh, who was harassing the athletes. So as SASCOC, uh, even this matter is in progress, where as guided by our safe guiding policy, we have requested the Federation to be able to deal with the matter uh, and come back and give us feedback in terms of how they'll handle that. Maybe I need to indicate to, to the members that in terms of the safe guiding process or policy, uh, the, the, the Federations are the first point of call to, to deal with the matter. And if they fail to resolve that issue, then as SASCOG, we're able to put a subcommittee that will then be able to deal with the matter and making sure that Whoever that raised the matter, uh, uh, the issue is resolved uh, in a manner that no one is going to be harassed in that particular sport code. The issue of Q-Sport, there are challenges. There are challenges internally, which they managed to resolve, but currently they have challenges with their continental body, uh, and which is something that we're trying to see how we can resolve as an organization. Uh, the, the last one, which is bodybuilding. Um, this matter was challenged by, look, Sage wrote to SASCO around the contravention of the anti-doping code. Um, and, and we at SASCO, we, we managed to engage our bodybuilding federation with regards to the communique that we had received to Sage. But I must say that the matter has been challenged by bodybuilding and they are directly engaging with Sage to try and resolve the matter. On issues of National Federation's lives and services, uh, noting that we, we've been having serious challenges about uh, compliance around issues of good governance from most of our national federation, 
as a SASCOC, uh, we decided to develop a norms and standard on good governance document. Uh, we had a, a number of consultation process with our federations in terms of what needs to be in these norms and standard or, or, uh, on good governance document. This document was presented last year at the AGM to the membership, and the membership has approved this document uh, as a document that we are going to use for us to be able to, to uh, check compliance on issues of good governance and check if our members really do have meetings, do have elections, they do communicate and consult with their members as guided by their own internal due processes. Membership, uh, uh, we've also, in terms of making sure that uh, we start the process, we've asked our members to start to submit their governance compliance documents to SASCOC. Uh, compliance governance documents, we're referring to, they need to give us minutes of the meetings that they've held, they need to give us their audited financial statements, uh, of, of each of their federations and, and obvious what is key is that they need to indicate that they are always in compliance to what their constitution say. And the last part of it is that uh, as SASCOC uh, with the issues around women in sport, our Women in Sport Commission is undertaking to do an audit on female representation within the membership and this is going to help the commission to be able to develop a strategy on how we're really going to start to to, to uh, encourage our federations to make sure that uh, our national federations have got more female leaders to manage their federation, to manage their structures. Thank you, patience. Any other presentation? Quickly, we have exceeded our time, uh, but I'm suspecting members uh, they didn't want to stop you because they want the information. Uh, I'm suspecting, don't you have the last presentation of your financial statements? <clears throat> Chair, again, Jerry, can we establish if you have this back on the line or not? Hello? He must Chair respond. Present. Yes. Chair yes. Yeah, I just wanted to re to remind her that she's not addressing the portfolio committee. She's addressing a joint city of the okay. spending committee and the portfolio, the select committee and the portfolio. No, thank you very much. Just that, thank uh, thank you, my co-chair. Thank you, my co-chair. Uh, um, oh, Mr. Jerry is asking a question to his colleagues. Whom are you asking to do what? No, I wanted just to establish if the agency was back when the land or still outside. I'm saying to you, uh, honorable members and our visitors, uh, have you finished a presentation of your good selves? If uh, the the CEO acting CEO is not around. Patience must uh, must go on. Okay. Yes. Well, ne next slide on on uh, the, the last presentation is it's about it, an update on the strategic plan. I'm back in chairperson. Thank you. But go ahead, patients. No, you can go ahead, Ravi. You do, you, Ravi, try, try yeah. to present. Try. If, if we are encountering problems, we'll refer to patients. But now we're hearing you. Please try to be faster. Th th thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much. My apologies. Chairperson, no uh, we, we, the next uh, presentation we want to make, and it's a very quick one, um, it's an activity that the uh, SESCOC and its board embarked on uh, over the last uh, uh, a few months, um, and we want to report this back to the Portfolio Committee. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's related to the formation of an independent body for sports coaching. Um, if you've got the slide up, Jabu, I'd like to continue. Thank you. There we go. Um, uh, 
Chairperson, um, I quickly want to take you through the process and background to how we formed the professional body for sports coaching, just share with you their vision, some of their core, core activities, introduce you to the interim board, I give you an indication of what the membership is like, um, talk about their responsible relationship with partners and core responsibilities, and the next step that SASCOP needs to implement. Chairperson, I want to emphasize this is an update on a process, and the process is continuing to unfold. As far as the background is concerned, SASCOP's primary mandate is aligned to high performance and sports and team delivery. A more focused structure for purposes of delivering and its alignment with the national qualifications framework was required. The National Sports Bill places a sizable mandate on the accountability of a professional body for sports coaching and it is intended to progress towards transformation of South African sport and the accountability and licensing of all coaches. And this uh, process is seen to support the performance of athletes and participants and improve uh, the quality of our athletes. The SESCOP General Assembly at its meeting on the 8th of June resolved the chairperson to establish the independent body for sports coaching and the General Assembly provided clarity on the roles, functions uh, and activities that are stipulated. Point of order, Chair. Point of order, Chair. Yes, Honorable Mshongo. Person, I think we've given Sasko more than 25 minutes. And yes. they even again failed to give us their financial statement. Now we've received these documents. There's no financial statement. I'm calling order, Chair. Sasko has failed us. This is not the first time. Yes, inspective that we're using technology, but they're failing us. There's no financial statement. We don't need any plans that we are doing. Where's your financial statement? Um, uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Mshongo. I did ask you here, you heard me when I'm saying that the presentation and their financial uh, statement. Can, can you respond on this, uh, 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 Mr. Ravin? Where are your financial statement? Uh, Chairperson, the, the invitation, I'm responding to the invitation of the Portfolio Committee, which specifically asked for these presentations that we are doing now. Perhaps if it would, if it would be in agreement with you, Chairperson, I'll go quickly to the last slide on, 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 on our next presentation, where I talk about the funding and the funding constraints. Uh, just to inform the uh, uh, Portfolio Committee, we are currently, we've just- Portfolio Committee and Select Committee. This, this is a joint meeting of two houses. Thank you, Chairperson, for the correction. If I could uh, please quickly inform the joint sitting that our financial year end ended on the 31st of March, 2020. We are currently in the process and we are hoping to finish this by as early as beginning of August, finish the audit of our financial statements for this year. Okay. Um, very quickly, Chairperson, without, without wasting time in terms of slides, I want to give you some financial indicators and this will probably help to understand. Our current projected cash inflow for the year 2020-2021 is 39.3 million. This money is largely made up of money that we receive from our uh, sponsors and grant uh, guarantors. They include the National Lottery Commission. Uh, we expect 5 million from them. Department, uh, Sports and Recreation, Arts and Culture, 11.2 million. We get an annual grant from the IOC uh, at the current exchange rate, dollar to rand, it's 17 million. We get uh, a sponsorship from Citibank via the IPC of 2 million. Uh, we get a National Olympic Committee activities grant of 1.5 million. And lastly, an admin grant from the IOC of 675,000. These are all at current dollar rand exchange rate. So our total inflow uh, is 39.3 million. 
our outflow chairperson, which is made up of salaries and allowances, OPEX and operational expenses, and operational expenses comes to 47.4 million. Clearly, you can see there's a deficit. There's a deficit of about 7 million in terms of our operating needs. Chairperson, this budget excludes giving delivery. We are not in funds to deliver on some of our games. Since the uh, postponement of the Tokyo game, perhaps for the wrong reasons. Point of order, Chair. Point of order, Chair. Yeah, yeah. Is, is, there, is there any way that uh, these these uh, financials could be, uh, uh, you know, screamed at? Because I hardly hear uh, a thing, you know, I'm, I'm just hearing him. Uh, Bubbling in, I'm, I, I can't hear anything here about these uh, financials. I, I find it very hard to understand what is going on. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Honorable Member. Uh, I must also uh, indicate that we have asked everything, and we cannot call Usasko after uh, the cancellation of the last meeting uh, that they were supposed to come. I have just consulted the office. Uh, they are saying invitation was inclusive of what we're ask, asking of financial uh, status. Uh, so I, I don't want to entertain that. If you think that the office didn't ask the financial status, status of you, they are saying to me they did. Uh, but uh, the problem of... Uh, network again crop up uh, we're all not hearing mr ravine so take take on patience chair yes uh, on, on issues of finances i mean uh, ravi is also an acting uh, cfo uh, and I think it was going to be proper for him to, to put it into the correct context. Okay. So, Can you so, try again, uh, Mr. Ravin? So I'll request that he should be able to deal with the matter of finances. Can you try again, Mr. Ravin? Uh, Ravi, Governor, Chairperson, I'm, 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 I'm in Chairperson. I can hear you clearly. I can see you clearly. I really don't know why it can't come through from my side. We are clear just now. Get on yes. Yes. yes now chairperson as i was explaining our cash inflow projections for the next coming year taking us to march uh, 2021 is 39.3 million uh, our outflow uh, for the same period is 47.4 million and these are projections now that will indicate to you that we have an operating deficit of just, just on 8 million or just under 8 million. Chairperson, these numbers exclude the cost of game delivery, exclude the cost of unfunded mandates, and exclude the cost of any other activities that fall outside of our core activities. And I want to highlight these. Number one, the cost of our legal um, uh, disputes and, and, and legal challenges that we face. Uh, we do not budget for that, clearly. We don't want these to happen, and they impact on our cash flow. Number two, games delivery. As an example, the Region 5 games that this year is going to be held in Lesotho and the African games, the Continental games, were not meant to be SASCOP mandates. They were interministerial games, and we uh, require help with delivering those games. With regard to the Olympics, uh, the reduction in the National Lotteries Commission funding of 100 million, as I've said, it's through their own internal criteria for no other reason, impact on our ability to deliver these games. So, Chairperson, in a nutshell, CHES is also uh, seeking funding to deliver its games, which mandates exceed our flows from our current. Uh, 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 sponsors. We are, we have used to uh, keep ourselves flow 
We do not feel vacancies to design and start to our process. Reduce all travel or any, any unnecessary things that are not directed to our court. Um, continue to uh, uh, streamline the business to be as cost effective as we can. We understand uh, the priority of the country and we understand the strain on all uh, government funding, but unfortunately, we are not able to deliver our dream if we don't do funding. All our budgets have presented to the necessary uh, uh, structures, uh, the National Workers Commissions, as well as the Department, and is ongoing engagement. Honorable members, uh, we didn't hear the last words of uh, this colleague because uh, they've exceeded our time. Now uh, our time is 11 o'clock. It's, it's, it's the time for members to engage and to ask everything, even this question of the statement which are not with us. Uh, you will we will put in your uh, constructive questions, and now, um, irrespective of acting CEO, uh, this, this meeting have been called long ago, and they were supposed to prepare everything. We can't uh, say the one and same thing to to you, Sasko. Whenever you are coming, you know what we want and. There's no entity that they can come here just uh, coming for report of the of the cases or without giving us the statement because even those cases uh, they are chowing the money of Sascock that we've since uh, the the fifth parliament we've been complaining about these court cases so. Can I now give platform to honorable members to engage? Mama Bulo. <laughs> Mama Bulo Mshongo, two minutes from each one. Mama Bulo. Majingu. Hey. Uh, Mama, Ma, Mama Bulo, Majingu, is it? Yes, please. Oh. Is starting Mama Bulo Mshongo. Uh, Sunday. Mr. CBC. CBC. Honorable Fandam. Fandai. Who else? Oh, Chairperson, my thing was Yamshi. No, no. It's Honorable Mama Bulo, Honorable Mshongo, Honorable Majingozi, Honorable CBC. Honorable Fantaik. Honorable Father, I've typed, but I don't see that it goes through, Chair. No, 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 Dol. You like that when I'm saying that if you want to speak, just speak, not addressing anyone. I've, I've put you as number six. Any and other member? Siabi. Siabi. Yes. And, and Baha, Chairperson. Uh, Baha. Christians, Chairperson. Who? Christians. Oh, uh, honorable Christians. Lutsoli and COP. Who? Lutsoli. Oh, Lutsoli. And Chavile. My chairperson, my co chairperson. Oh, Lutsoli. Killian from NCOP. Who's that? My chairperson, my co chairperson. Uh, after co chairperson, who is that? Uh? Killian from NCOP. Okay. After co chairperson, who is that? It's Killian. 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 Mauritius, Dongen. Can, can I start with number one? Now I'm monitoring the minutes. Two minutes each. If you are exceeding, I will be cutting you. Uh, Honorable Mamabulo. 
Two minutes only. Yes, yes. You see okay, now, fine. we have about 13 people who want to ask questions. Two okay. minutes. No, Start. it's fine. I've got only two quick questions. One, um, they spoke about uh, the no, no, a letter which uh, Honorable Ravel wrote to the minister. Um, um, alleging that the president or the acting president of SASCOG um, tried to block her candidacy <clears throat> um, of the president of SASCOG. I mean, I, um, I'm trying to check how powerful is the uh, position of the president or the acting president of SASCOG to an extent that um, that particular individual is able to block uh, what you call another candidate. Because I'm trying to check um, in terms of their constitution, I think. Um, um, only one one person from um, a federation can contest for um, to be elected into such board. Now the question is because um, Honorable Hendricks, the acting president, and also Honorable Raven, they are both from one federation. Are they allowed to contest for one position coming from the same federation? The other question is the term of um, the office for board members. I know some of the board members have been there for more than three terms. Are they not considering maybe to limit their term just like that of the president? Because the president of SASCOG, once he ends 70, he's eligible to stand um, for that position again. The last issue, because now I'm always worried about the athletes. The, 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 the Olympics and Paralympics have been postponed to 2021. If SASCOG... Uh, this is talking to the athletes, checking their fitness um, in preparations for the 2021 um, um, Olympics and Paralympics. I don't want to talk about the finances. I mean, you know, we, 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 we have been going back and forth regarding the finances. They come, we chase them away. They come, they chase them away. Nothing new. And so I don't want to talk about those finances. Two quick questions. The position of the president. Oh, it's time. Up. The position of the president. Time expired. Time expired. Time expired. Uh, let me go to Honorable Mshongo. Honorable Mshongo. Thank you, Chair. Chair, thank, thank you, Chair. The SASCOG has failed to fulfill its mandate or its Yes. It appears that it, it's even failing the committee. They don't have their financial exactly uh, members of SASCOG have conflict of interest why do we allow that we have members who are serving on loads we have members who are serving in different uh, formations there's another question that i wanted to find out who are the members of SASCOG judicial body when were they appointed how were they appointed is SASCOG considering to have election via digital or online election because the failed the mandate of uh, uh, the committee above all. I wanted to find out SASCOP has endured several leadership management scandals. Is the organization, I want to find out, are the members of the board have the interest of sports or not? The survey has told us that this organization has failed negatively in sports in South Africa. One, one thing that I wanted to find out, why we have uh, six review under ministerial uh, overview. They did not implement 17 recommendations. There are still outstanding 10 outstanding uh, uh, re recommendations from ministerial uh, uh, report. I wanted to find out exactly what causes SASCOG to not function. They, are not, they don't have money right now. I can tell you, I can put to you, SASCOG is on the verge of bankruptcy. They don't have money in their bank account. I can tell you that. Now, Chairperson, one thing that I wanted even to highlight or to ask, they, ask, they don't tell us who's the, who, who is the member of the firm that talking about post office. Who are the mem Who is that company? You call yeah. the um, yeah. post office. How are they appointed? How much are they? Two hundred. Sure. Charger? I'm intimidated. I don't know. Someone is speaking. Or the, or the chairperson, someone is busy uh, answering Honorable Mkongo while, while he's talking. What's going on? Thank you, sir.
The person I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you, Chair. Honorable Mlongo, I'm saying the, the, the person who disturbed you uh, took a half a minute of yours. Please finalize your, your questions. I don't know who was doing that. Okay. Yeah. So I wanted to find out, this, uh, according to, can you hear me, Chair? Yes. Okay. According to the report, SASPOC received 20 million or 22 million uh, from Tokyo Game. I wanted to find out, can they survive without lotto money? Another question one I want to find out, who are the members of this? Uh, oh, I've asked that question to Vishal yes. Thank, Thank you. Thank okay, you, Honorable Mishong. Okay, you, you hear my clock is, is ringing. Your time is fired. The next person, Honorable Mishongos. Honorable Mishongos. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Um, with, with all the news that are all over the media and with all the disputes that uh, you know, are within the, the board members, how can we believe that uh, this, uh, the, the, the organization can, can, can pull through and, 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 and manage uh, the whole organization and, and if it will benefit South African athletes? And um, the, the, the other question I have is, is Sasquatch assisting the young black person I'm pink to stay. What's going on? I think someone's mic is on, Chair. Can I continue, Chair? Can, Can we continue? tell who's patients? Patients must mute his mic, Honorable Chairperson. Can I continue? Person, can I continue? Yes, continue, Mr. Mazingozi. Yes. Uh, my other question is: Is Saskog assisting the young black sports women and sports girls in this? And it looks like uh, Saskog is not clear with their financials. The whole board seems to be uh, questionable. I don't understand what is going on here, and uh, I think it needs to be looking at and, and uh, really uh, look at the whole board and, and, and see how it can be changed because. It is not functioning. Um, the last question is: How many uh, women are, 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 are in the the the, uh, the board of, of Sarscog, and and are they helping into making the 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 South African uh, sports women and girls uh, progress in 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 their uh, endeavors? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Majingosi, Honorable Simisi, Honorable Simisi. Yes, thank Hon you, Chairperson. Can you hear me, Chairperson? Yes. No, thank yes. you, Chairperson. Yes, thank you, and greetings to all honorable members, including the NCOP members. Uh, Chairperson, in the reports uh, concerning the disputes and arbitrations, it is very concerning that five of those members whose names were being disputed and they take the met they took the matter to arbitrations and they won the case. So one would like to know uh, in terms of dispute, what is it that Saskok was disputing these five members? And after all, those members they also won the case. Why initially they were not allowed to stand in? and contest the vacancy and it does Saskok see themselves that they can transform sport in south africa if they are still doing like what they are doing they are 
the mother body of all federations, but their performance is being put into questions. As parliament, we are looking to them to transform sport in South Africa, but we doubt the way they are doing. You can't have so many disputes. You can't even fail to present a good financial statement, yet you have a huge task of, transpo- of transforming sport in South Africa. Thank you, Chairperson. Mm. Thank you so much. Brief to the point. Another member, Honorable Van Dijk. Honorable Van Dijk. Honorable Thank Van you, Dijk. Um, my question, Chair, I'm, um, I'm speaking. Yes. Okay. IOC, um, uh, what is the IOC's response to the minister's letter? As Hendrik's transgressions to be investigation, uh, investigated, did the board uh, comply with their powers and authority? And was the board divided on this? Did the board follow due process? And my last question will be, what is the OPEX funding status? Thank you. Hi. Uh, honorable uh, CBS and Honorable Van Dijk, they are exemplar. Sieve. Honorable Knox. Honorable Sieve. Yes. Thank yes, you go much, on. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Uh, thanks. And thanks for let me welcome the the presentations. Quickly, I heard if it's correct that the acting CEO is also acting as the acting CFO. Is that correct? And if it is correct, don't they think this is uh, against good governance? Two, is the board of SASCOC in their current status, do they think they'll still be able to take forward the transformation of sports in South Africa? especially in the context of preparing for Tokyo 2021 as it was postponed. Three, how long will the investigations take place? Because if there's no time frame, it might be interpreted as if other people are deliberately being left out because of the, because of the investigations. And uh, I would also request that... Uh, if they can communicate with our office to submit their financial statements so that we can, at our own time, be able to deal with, the, with those. And the absence of leave for Mrs. Ra- Ravele and, uh, from TSA and, Mr. and the, acting, the suspended acting president of SASCOC, are there time frames or are they suspended indefinitely? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Siebi. Uh, Honorable Chair. is Baha. Who's calling uh, Chair, me now? Alex Kosana. Alex Kosana, Chair. I'm on, the, I'm on the line. Thank you. Sorry. Oh. Honorable Baha. Um, Honorable Baha. Thank you, Chair. I hope I'm thank audible you. enough. Yes, yes. Yes, thank you, Chair. Chairperson, um, mine is, is, I think, two or three issues that I want to raise quickly. Um, firstly, I think SASCOC, SASCOC has been on the news for wrong reasons. And those um, relate to um, good governance. And, and I think that having been entrusted with a mandate, of ensuring that there's transformation throughout all our sporting codes. I think that there should be an intervention um, that seeks to deal with this specific matter because it's worrisome. (coughs) Chairperson, I want to direct this to the Deputy Minister, uh, that when she makes her input, can she be able to tell us what interventions could be made wherein the could be a reputable, uh, respectable board that will take charge of SASCOC. Because as it is, 
I'm worried of the standing of this board. Chair, I think the latter speaker really, um, made mention of the fact that the acting CEO is also a CFO. And for me, I think that there might be a conflict of interest there. And I would like to pick on the brains again of the deputy minister to say, how do they view that as a department? Do they think that is in order? The last one, Chairperson, I want to understand what is the relationship like between the federations that are affiliated to SASCOG and SASCOG itself? Is there, a, is there collegiality? Is there sound working relationships? Because at times we find that federations kind of undermine SASCOG itself. Probably it's because SASCOG's house is not in order. And I want to get a sense from SASCO. Are they happy with how things are with, with um, the different federations that are affiliated to them? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Um, Thank you. Uh, I would just like to note that um, it's very difficult to analyze SASCOC's progress to date. Um, although they've given us many presentations, um, they haven't given us a detailed presentation on their financial performance to date. Um, and I would just like to know why has SASCOC not done so? And then just my second and last question, the Olympic and Paralympic Games have been postponed for 2021. Has SASCOG devised plans on how it is going to motivate and prepare these athletes for the Games since this postponement, postponement has happened? Thank you, Chairperson. Thanks. On the list, Honorable Lutuli. Honorable Tuli. Honorable Tuli. Honorable Thank you, Chairperson. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Um, not trying to repeat what other members have said, uh, because uh, most of the questions that I wanted to ask, uh, they, they've already been asked. But really, one would like to know for uh, we would like uh, SASCO to, 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 to explain to us why their presentation did not um, include their performance uh, indicators and, and their financial statement because as where I'm sitting, we don't know where, whether uh, they are in good state or they are not. We don't know their income and expenditures. So one would like uh, for them to explain to us why, why, why they did not uh, present it to us. Thank you so much, Chairperson. Thank you so much, honorable members. Uh, my co-chair. Chairperson, Willem Faber, I've asked. Yes. I've not been mentioned for my question at all. No one's asked me. You should tell me if I can pose my questions, Chair. Uh, honorable, I'll put you on the list, honorable Faber. Honorable, please. Honorable. Hello, Chair Honorable. Honorable Poche, yes. Honorable. Hello. Yes. Yeah, the reception is getting real bad. Are you able to hear me? I do. Yes, Chair President. I um, do hear the, the, you. Yes. Uh, my other questions were raised by Lutuli and Honorable Lutuli and other members. I think uh, I just want to know when are they going to give us the quarterly uh, um, uh, monitoring report, um, the the MAU progress with the to the department, because we can actually monitor what we do not have on the table. I don't want to repeat what other members have said. Thanks a lot, Chair. Thank you, Honourable. Chairperson, the Honorable Dongeni. No, no, sorry, sorry, Honorable Gillian Morosia. I'm sorry, Honorable Morosia, yes. 
Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, I won't be long. Um, if we look into the transformation that is happening in our country regarding to sport, I want to be bluntly here and very honest that Saskok is failing this country. I also want to be very honest here, Chairperson, that as Parliament and our oversight role, we can't be silenced like this. This is not the first time Saskok is coming with this present kind of presentation. My question is directed to the Deputy Minister as the Minister is not present. How long must we look into what is happening within Sasco and in the transformation of sports that's not happening at the speed that we want it to happen? Is there a possibility, Deputy Minister? Um, I think you must legally answer us on this one, that this board can be dismissed and that the interim board can be put into place by the minister as we get our house in order to get an AGM. We can't be dragged as this country with a, with a board that can't even present us with financial statements that is dragging in court because they've got differences with each other. So my question, Chairperson, this morning is directed to the deputy minister and to the minister so that we can continue with what we're supposed to do with transformation of sport in the country. I thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Mauricia. Honorable Dongeni. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I don't know what the Chair is. I okay, do so hear good. you. Eh? Thank you, so good. I just only have two questions. Morning, honorable members. Morning, deputy <laughs> minister. Uh, some could have got a problem here, and it's a big problem. But uh, other members covered me. I've got only two questions. If I'm a chairperson here, yeah, I'm going to chase out Saskog. Serious. Because it's a problem, and it's a big problem. Okay. My question is, how many vacancies they have? The second one, what is the current status of the SASCOS presidential elections? Is it free and fair? Thank you, Chair. All of them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable uh, Mazo. Um, Honorable Faber. Honorable Faber. Thank, thank you, Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, Chairperson, Chief, yes. Um, we've seen that Mr. Barry Hendricks uh, has already said that Saskok is on the verge of financial um, bankruptcy, if we can say it in that way. Um, and also that there's a lot of conflict of interest that we've read in this um, board. Um, for instance, Mr. Skoskana is on the Lottery Distribution Board, and um, we saw told today that there was almost no money coming in from Lotto. So um, now, I mean, if such a person would stand as chairperson, for instance, um, of this, um, all the other federations are actually hanging on because this specific individual might be able to give uh, money over from the Lotto to their federations. So my question on this is, is there not a type of a conflict of interest already when it just comes to voting in um, um, of a board? Then, for instance, I listened to Mr. Ravi Governor on the radio the other day, quite a while ago, actually. And it was about the finances. And, and the finances is in dire strike. He said also that since 2016-17, there wasn't a CFO. He's been doing both, which is to me also a problem. But the main thing, in Olympic year, the website has not been um, up to date. And when the, he was asked the question, why not? Um, all our, our sportsmen, everyone should be able to get onto this website. You can't see who the chairperson are on this, etc. He was saying it's because of operational reasons. Now, chairperson, um, we can't have an organization with finances is in diarrhea like this. Um, then I also want to know, Mr. Mr. Hendricks was asking 
Who are the members of Saskalt's judicial body? When were they appointed? Um, and, and this is one thing that we need to know because this body was not in existence or in place when he even took his leave. Um, Chairperson, um, yeah, that's. I will rather just stop there at this stage. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Thank you, Honourable Members. Um, my one question, because uh, Honourable Members, they've asked so many questions which are relevant. Uh, because of uh, COVID-19, you couldn't go on with your conference. I would love to check with you, board members, and our deputy minister. Uh, if this COVID-19 can stretch until December or until next year, uh, I don't think that you are able to sit until that time. I would love to say to board members and to the ministry that something must be planned now because we we can do you can do what we're doing as as we're speaking because you're overstaying with these uh, challenges uh, really as honorable members just said we need you to to work for south africa and we need you to have uh, the mandate to have your AGM. Now you are about to be bankrupt whilst uh, we're not having financial statements. Uh, this thing of going to court every now and then, uh, we, we are condemning it, but uh, because of your constitution, it does allow sometimes when we are uh, encountering problems that you must take legal actions. But really, we want to see you having a new board. And if you can tell us that, are you able to prepare for it? I thank you. Uh, any responses? from the board members, from our DM, from our DG, you are welcome. Just tell me who are you, what do you want to respond on what? Thank you. We have got uh, 15 questions in front of us. Uh, and at least we, we do have enough time even maybe for follow-up questions. We're now 11.30. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. I think let me start. Uh, yes. This is the yes. Deputy Minister of Sport, Arts and Culture. Thank you, DM. My response is not going to be specifically on specific questions, but to try and give an overall picture so that then the, the SASCOC itself can then respond to specific questions in the department. First of all, Chair. Greetings to the members of both houses um, and, and the officials from both uh, SASCO and the department and the board members present. I just want to, to stress, Chair, first that the South African Sports Confederation and Olympic Committee, which is SASCO in short, is, is entrusted with the work of making sure that sports in South Africa is in good shape. And if anything then is wrong with the body itself, it affects the sport itself in the country. And I think members across the board have raised this issue. One of the big things that we need to stress, first of all, is that SASCO is, is a national coordinating macro body for high performance sport in the country. That's one. But secondly, it is also an Olympic committee. Therefore, it is responsible for preparation of the Olympics. And thirdly, it is a sports confederation. Now, 
you can see the task and the, and the work that it is entrusted with. Now, you will know, and you have raised this, that it has been in the media and in the public domain for wrong reasons. And you also heard from the report that the ministry and the department has intervened as far back as the time of Minister Nessi, Minister Kasa, and now Minister Ted. The Zulman Commission, which was put in place, came back with the recommendations, and the SASPOC was asked to implement these recommendations. One of the things that is important to raise is that in their, in their AGM of November 2019, when the minister addressed them, was the fact that they need to put their house in order. That's why, if you listen to the report, that on the 25th of January, they had to amend the constitution to make sure that they are ready for their uh, elective conference, which takes place every four years. Now, that conference was brought forward. It was supposed to be around September, but it was brought forward to March because both SASCOG, the department and the ministry realized the challenges that they are having amongst themselves as the board members and the issue of governance. And the feeling was that the sooner the, the, the elective conference takes place, the better, so that some of the issues can be resolved. We know now that that conference couldn't take place on the 28th of March because of the COVID-19. We, we, we agreed on that because we realized that as the department, we can't just intervene on SASCOC issues. You will know that many a times when government and department try to intervene, not only in South Africa, but across the world on sports issues, it's, it is being seen as interference. That's why when the problems of the preparation for the elections and the accusations that were flying around, the minister wrote to the International Olympic Committee, the IOC, asking them to intervene and assist SASCOG as they were preparing. And of course, the response came back and said, let SASCOG resolve its own issues. And, and, and I'm putting that on record because I know that in other platforms, it looked like minister was trying to interfere on SASCOG issues. Minister wrote to IOC, and IOC responded and said, SASCOG must try and resolve its own issues. And therefore, I want to agree with members when they say, how long are we going to wait for this elective conference? Because I think the elective conference is what is going to assist us. Now that it did not take place in March, uh, on the 28th, and now that we know that we are sitting with this lockdown and COVID situation, I think what is important and what I'm taking out of the members is that we can't wait forever for this conference. Therefore, the ministry, SASCOG and the department must put their heads together and look at how can we hold this conference in the midst of the COVID-19. Can we have it virtually? Can we have it in any other means rather than waiting forever for the COVID-19 to finish? Because I believe that if we can be able to resolve that part, half of the issues can be resolved. And my parting shot, Chair, is that whilst SASCOG is saying it, the, the financial year finishes in March and therefore they don't have audited statements, I really want to appeal to them because if they were if they were preparing for an elective conference that would have taken place on the 28th of March, surely there is an audited statement that would have been presented at the elective conference. Can they furnish members of parliament, both houses, with that even if it's not complete and then say, we will wait for the one that will be ready by August. But there is one that should be ready because that one should have been presented at the conference as part of the preparation of the conference. Can then SASCOG members assist and make sure that that part is presented to the members? Because members have to do their work 
And if they don't have information in front of them, how is it that they can do their work? And I want to agree with members when they say, if then these things cannot be put in place, it means the transformation of sport in the country is in dire state because SASPOT itself is in dire state. Until we are able to put it in the house in order, we can then talk of a transformation of sport that is back into, into, into working. Therefore, I hear what honorable members were saying about asking questions directly to me and wanting me to intervene directly. And on the issue of the interim board, we can't answer that now. As you know, how SASPOC functions, how department functions, it is clear that it is an independent body that the department can't just jump in and, and, and dissolve the board, or the ministry can't just jump in, but there would have to be some negotiations and, and, and interventions and talking so that we make sure that everything else has been exhausted before the, the government can be seen to interfere on the issue of SASCO. But I agree with members fully that we need to look at, now that we couldn't hold that four-year elective conference in March, what is it that can be done now to make sure that we put SASCO back into its fully functioning position? Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable DM. Honorable Co-Chairperson Mchabele, can you chair now? Honorable Mchabele. Honorable Mchabele. Honorable Co-Chair. Honorable Co-Chair. Honorable Co-Chair. I was trying to give it to Honorable Mchabele. I don't know. Uh, he, he is not responding. Uh, any responses from Saskok? Responses from Saskok? Saskok board members? <coughs> uh, Jerry speaking, Chair. Yes, Jerry. I, I thought the acting president of Saskok, Mr. Alex Wasana, will take the lead and will follow after. Yes. Uh, Mr. Skosan? Mr. Skosan, uh, <coughs> staff members I assist I, us. <coughs> I want to propose that in the meantime, then I can try to respond to some of the questions until Mr. Skosan is back on the line. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank, thank you to all, all honorable members. <coughs> I'm going to first start with the response from the question that was posed by honorable member Mama Bulo. <coughs> on the issue of whether you can have a board members who serve in the board or who are actually contesting election from the same federation. I just want to correct that to say that uh, Mr. Hendricks and Mayor Ndambirabel are not from the same federation. So that is the point that I wanted just to clarify to the honorable members. Mayor Ndambirabel, she's originally from Tennis and uh, the former acting uh, president, Mr. Hendricks, he was not from the Houghton Sports Confederation, so they're not from the same federation. On the issue of the Tokyo Games, I think already in the report that has been presented by the acting chief executive officer, it is very clear that we have already reported to the honorable members to say that it was due to the issue of the COVID-19 that we are unable to have the games in 2020. In 2020. And those games will only be taking place in 2021. And the preparation from our side, as has called, we are, are all on track. And I think the report can also be presented specifically on the mitigation processes that has been put in place by the by, by SASCOG as an organization. So those are the issues that I wanted first to clarify from the side of the honorable member, Mama Bolo. And then I'll first leave other matters to the other board members, then I'll come back after again, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, Jerry. Any, uh, Mr. Skosan, are you back? Mr. Skosan? Any other member of board that want to uh, respond on the questions? Uh, 
we must be aware that we have 15 questions, but most good, of good. the questions UDM uh, responded. Who's saying good day? Good morning. Who is on the mic? Good morning, Jefferson. Yes. Who's speaking? Kaya Majege. Oh, Mr. Majege, go on. Good morning, yes, Mr. Uh, Chapter Sin, and uh, honorable members of both houses, uh, together with my colleague, colleagues, uh, mm-hmm. as well as the members of the Department of Sport. Uh, firstly, uh, I must thank our DM with regards to the explanation that uh, uh, she has just made. Uh, I think it gives clarity. Uh, with uh, how, in terms of how we should uh, facilitate the entire process. Uh, I also noted the, and definitely she has highlighted in terms of how we should even intend to intervene uh, so that we are able to resolve the current status quo. However, one of the questions that were raised, it was around the issue of transformation in sport. I wanted to say, the issue of transformation, it emanates uh, firstly with the federations themselves. And uh, this is where we should see transformation, where we should be able to see federations uh, meeting uh, the demographics of this country in terms of their development plans, where we should be able to see uh, black athletes, black swimmers, uh, as the, all the national demographics, uh, as the DM has just uh, alluded to the fact that Saskob's role, uh, as well as its own... Honorable Majege? Honorable Majege? Honorable Majege? Yes. Uh, the officers, they want you to switch your veto. Okay. Do you hear me? Mr. Majege? Yes, I've done it. Okay. I've done it, uh, Honorable Member. Continue. Chairperson, can, can you ask Jerry and the DM to switch off the videos, please? Uh, Jerry, DM, switch off your videos. DM, Jerry, switch off your videos. Yes. Okay. okay. I'm trying, Chair. I'm trying from my side. Oh, you must try. Okay. Oh, the Emmy, she knows this thing, Yena. Yeah. Uh, go on, Mr. Majege. Uh, thank you, Chaper- Honorable Chaperson. So I wanted to highlight the fact that the federations themselves uh, need to be taken into task uh, with regards to the issue of transformation uh, of sport within our country. Uh, the next point that I wanted to allude into. It's regarding the state of readiness when it comes into Olympics. Uh, Fortunately, I will be able to provide, I'll try my best as a person who has worked in the past within that, actually within that department. Uh, We were, we had a plan indeed in terms of positioning South Africa at the 2020 Games and uh, we had probable uh, 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 medals that were earmarked to be won by uh, up to seven sporting codes. However, and all the preparations prior to COVID-19 were in place as per our plan as the country. However, the challenges that are faced now with, COVID, with regards to the question that is before us, that was asked by the honor, honorable member. The process that we need to embark on now is to engage again those earmarked federations, especially the ones that who have qualified already to the Olympics, together with the ones that were earmarked to qualify for the Olympics. The process that we normally embark, embark on as the Olympic Committee or Sports Confederation is to engage the coaches, the national federation, as well as the athletes themselves. As you would agree with me that the plans itself, you would uh, note that uh, there would be plans that would be monitored by the Sports Confederation themselves 
up until they reach the Olympics. However, those plans, due to the current situation that we are, fa that we are faced with, we ought to revisit uh, those plans. I believe that uh, I'm aware that the, I can safely say, tell the, the honorables that uh, uh, the high, our high performance department is working on to meeting with all those relevant parties so that we come up with the revised plans so that we don't miss out uh, on our new strategy in terms of delivering Team South Africa into the Olympic Games next year. I'll stop there for now, um, Honorable Chair. Thank you. Is there any member of board? Where is Mr. Skosan? Mr. Skosan? Chair. Person. Chairperson. Who is that? Yes, Mr. the um... Minister, just, just to say, whilst we are waiting for Mr. Skosan, Mr. Anat Singh, who is here, is representing the International Olympic Committee, the IOC. If maybe at some point you can give him an opportunity to speak. Thank you so much. Okay. At the, uh, after Mr. Skosan, I'll give it to him. Thank you, DM. Mr. Skosan? Babu Skosan. How about it? Babu Skosan. Let me give to the, the, the member that you have just said is with us. Is Mr. Who, DM? Mr. Singh, Anat Singh. Mr. Oh, Mr. Singh, can you take uh, the podium or your mic? Do you hear me? Oh. Where is my office? Chairperson. Sure. Yes. I don't know if you can hear me. Cecilia Mulukwan here. I I do hear you, President. Thank you, Chairperson. Can I answer on the other questions? Yes, because yes. I see that pre the, yes. the acting president yes. is not here. So yes, if you can President. Help, the question yes. of how many women are there in the board of Saskook, it was raised, and I think um, we should answer it. It's yes. Ms. Molokwane, it's Ms. Melani, and Dr. Alexander, who are there now in the Saskook board. So and Ms. Natalie to toy it. So it's, it's the four of us who are there in the board uh, at the present moment. And the out other of how many? Out, out of how many members? Are we not 12? We're 12, Jerry, eh? Out of 12 members. Yes. Out of 12. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Can you please again? Excuse me. What are you saying, Mr. Madrungos? Uh, uh, the president of the netball is saying that there are four women yes. uh, out of 12. The name is president, please. Ms. Cecilia Mulukwani, Ms. Luandile Similani, Dr. Debbie Alexander, and Ms. Natalie Detroit. Thank you. Thank you. Go on. The other issue that I wanted to, I don't know if I'm the relevant person to talk about it, but as I was affected, as I was yes. not legible to stand, and now I'm legible, uh, I was not legible to stand because of an ID copy that I did, that they, that they said I didn't call, uh, call, uh, submit. And the other people were like, they didn't submit their, their good stand member in good standing uh, forms from their federation. So, it was Mr. Kosana from Athletics. It was Farrell from um, Moses from uh, Northern Cape Sports Confederation. Mr. Jerry Kosana from uh, uh, Free State um, Rugby. And um, it was me. And all of us, we declared uh, that we can now stand for, for elections and, com and in the contest on those positions that people believe that we should be in. I think also Honorable Mamabolo asked something about um, asked something about um, the term of office and how long people have been there. Uh, Honorable Mamabolo, some of us are only months in that office, and most of them that are in that office had a long time being in the office. So we need to tell you the truth and tell you the the, the stories as they are. I mean, I think if the chairperson was uh, Mr. Skosano would would connect and 
answer correctly on whose term, who got in when and where, that would help a lot in, in, in doing this. Um, and um, I think it's, it's proper for us also to, to, as a board, on behalf of the chairperson, if he's not there, um, to, to also place our disappointments, to say that we, 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 if we, we couldn't submit the, the, the financial statement, as the DM said, I mean, we cannot come here and play thy holy. We have to take responsibility as leaders. And I believe I'm one person I'll take responsibility as a leader if something doesn't go right. Um, the, the, we, we, we know that the financial year ended in, in the, on the 31st March. of March. And we, we, couldn't, we have to get the parliament an audited financial statement. However, I think we should have also played a part of saying whatever we have that can show parliament where we're standing financially. So it's, mm-hmm. even if when we come and ask for something, we can have something to show that we can ask from you to say this is what we're asking for. Something that we have to do and let me commit on behalf of the board, even though I'm not that senior, I'm just a new kid on the block. But I think I can commit to say by the end of next week, this time, that the little financial committee, the, the little financial statement should have come to, to the portfolio committee to, to make sure that you, you are on board and understand what is happening, not to hear only what the acting CEO was saying, but that. And on the issue of acting CEO and the and and CFO, we we took a, a resolution and on our last meeting to say, um, is patience squambani must do the administrative work, and um, the 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 acting C, CFO who is the acting CFO must look more on finances and um, is patience squambani must do the administrative work because we we uh, people like us and others we we saw that. According to governance, it's not correct that one person can be on two positions at the same time. So we were trying to fix something, but that's how we fixed it at the moment. That's all I wanted to say, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you, uh, President of the NEPOL of South Africa. Uh, any other member from the board members to take uh, <coughs> two or three questions <clears throat> were left with six minutes, but you must also implement. That's the problem, Sasko, with you. We are saying that you have decided that all patients must take CFO position, but today the very same even patients was telling us that all CEO uh, is also a CFO. Please implement your decisions. Anyone want to take State, there is a question that they were saying that oh, Mr. Skorsana is not supposed to contest, <clears throat> but the president now is telling us that then it was a problem of IDs, some of their good membership from their federation. Can someone talk about that, even if it's not Mr. Skorsana? Is it correct that he's not legible to stand? Or to contest, chairperson. Yes. Oh. Chairperson. Jerry, uh, there's there's somebody you want to still want to answer. I'll give it to you, Mr. Mshong. Yes, Jerry. Yes, Jerry. Thank th- th- thank you, Chair. Uh, I wanted just to quickly comment, firstly, on the issue of the potential conflict of interest, as it has been mentioned by some of the honourable members. Specifically on the issue of being a board member of SASCOG and also serving in the Lutari, National Lutheran Commission. Uh, look, Chair, we've got a constitution at SASCOG. It's very clear who is actually eligible to stand for elections as a member of SASCOG. Uh, where I will actually ask the, the department and, and, and parliament to look into, there is no policy currently that denies any city member or sitting board member of SASCOG or any member of SASCOG not to be in the Luther Risk Commission. If there is a potential conflict of interest chair, I will refer the matter back to, to Parliament, to the Department, so that the police can be formulated. Because it's just purely a matter of, of policy. There is nothing in the policy that clearly says that you cannot serve on both. But once the, develop, the policy has been developed, then you can split that follow the policy as it is. But as I'm saying currently, there is nothing that the talks to that. 
I also want to talk about the issue of the term of office of the board members of SASCOG. And I'm going to speak on the specifically on the issue of constitution. That's why constitution is very clear that each member is allowed to serve for a maximum of three terms. In, 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 maybe in the same position. Like if I can make an example as Jerry Sukhwaba. You can serve for the for one four year term term for the next three terms, which is 12 years in totality. Then after 12 years, then you're not eligible to stand for a same position that we've been for the past uh, uh, 12 years. Uh, you can only stand for a position which is different from that one, but it doesn't actually give us a specific time frame to say that um, after 12 years, you can no longer be a board member at all. It's in the question of SASCOP. Thank you, Jerry. Um, Honorable Mshongo. Honorable Mshongo. Thank you, Chair. Chair, my, my question were not answered, and it, 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 we can speak of leadership. This is their presentation, and they're failing to ask who are the members of the judicial report. It's on their presentation. I think. Okay, let's give them one minute. Answer. Honorable Mshongo, in order that you must not take their time. They must answer that specific question. Any anyone to what answer that? Chairperson. Yes. No, 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 no. Honourable members, I don't want any member. I want uh, the member of board to answer this question of Honourable Mshongo because we don't have time. We have got one minute to go. Please, Jerry and 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 Majeke and uh, patience. Chairperson, I'm in. Recognize me, please. Who, who's that? It's Ravi Gavinder, acting senior chairperson. Talk, talk, get that. Th I'm giving you, you the chance. Thank you very yeah. much, chairperson. Chairperson, um, uh, observing full protocols in respect of my board members uh, uh, that would have responded had they been connected. Uh, I will try to touch on some of the issues that I am able to... You have zero minutes, because I've said, I've cut the honorable members saying that you were left with one minute, but now go straight to what you want to say. No minutes left for you. Tell us what you Thank want you. to say. Th Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, in respect of uh, the perceived conflict between the governance of a financial officer and a CEO, Chairperson, the position of CFO is vacant. I am the accounting officer and as accounting officer, ultimately responsible for all finances. We have segregation of duties and adequate controls in terms of our finance administration. We've been audited and we have had a clean audit for the last two years that I've been there. So thank you, thank you. We, we cannot confirm that because you didn't come with the statements. Honorable Mchaveleng, please close the meeting. Honorable Mchaveleng, close the meeting. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, thanks, th thanks a lot. Let me take this time and thank the, the DM for being with us from the beginning up to now. And uh, the SASCOP team, uh, members of parliament, both the select committee and okay, the portfolio okay. committee, we thank you. And um, we're going to suggest that if there are, I know that there are certain questions that were not answered particularly on the finances, like when are we going to get this or that document? So we will you send some of these things, uh, the outstanding documents, including the, the, the questions that were not asked, so that in the next meeting you, ask, you answer those questions. And for the honorable members, those who have questions that they would like to ask can do that in writing, like write to the, through our through our committee secretaries. Um, thank you very much. Till we meet again, this mission, this meeting is adjourned. Stay safe, That's stay safe, safe, stay locked down. Uh, there's, there's information, uh, Honorable Chairperson, just arriving to me. 
my office is saying that this meeting we allow until 12.30. Is it correct, Ajabulil? Thank you. Let's continue. Ajabulil. Yes, Chair, that's correct. Yes, Chair, okay. that's correct. Okay, Honorable Mklongo, continue. Uh, you must forward information in time. I've just seen it now. Honorable Mklongo, I'm sorry, Honorable uh, the Chairperson, to say close whilst we're still a few minutes. Honorable Mklongo? Chairperson, it shows that the acting CEO or FSA Yes. Yes. Follow up. Uh, no, I'm still with you, Honorable Mklongo. I'm still with Honorable Mklongo. The, the first one, a follow up, you didn't respond on judicial. How many? That only one representative can, you can nominate as, as many as you want. I, 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 Judicial board has given the pause to go and find line. And it's a, there's an issue around conflict of interest and whether Utatus Kosana is eligible or not able to, to, to contest for the elections, the NLC. Uh, maybe it's something that we, we just need to have it in writing, but as far as I'm concerned, he's no more the member of the National Lotteries Commission. Uh, the, 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 the next one, it's uh, the audit firm. I'm the one who spoke about is because whenever you talk audit, People think that these people had to audit when non eligible were not uh, accepted. Um, I, I think I think uh, Messi has uh, somehow uh, explained uh, uh, the, the reason to that, and I think we're happy that now the, arbit the arbitrator has actually awarded that to continue. Uh, but but I must indicate that um, it was more on the basis that there was that particular checklist that was sent to the membership Africa and and SASCO processes. Um, uh, the fact that uh, Mentambi is, is alleging that both our acting president and the tennis South Africa president uh, uh, could have blocked a, um, a issue of contesting the, the position in, in Sascoq. Uh, the, the tennis South Africa has, has gone uh, through its own internal process for them to put the two on leave of it's got nothing to do with us as SASCOC around, around that aspect. Rather to respond to the other, others that I could have not touched base on. Thank you very much, Chair. The intake was not answered. Which one? Another uh, problem? Can, SAS, yeah, can SASCOC survive saying they were appointed on your AGM? When, which AGM? Because you have several AGMs that you had. What was their main date? Thank you, Chair. I've seen the notice of Mr. Majege want to get in. Mr. Majege? Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, I think with regards to the Judicial Commission uh, existence or valid, uh, Mr. Shikwambana has uh, explained that process. Each uh, council meeting where those names uh, were, were accepted. However, what I want actually to answer uh, one of the questions that Honorable Song has just raised uh, regarding the sustenance as well as via 